Hi, this is Paul Veal. This is the day I took down my three alma tribander and dipoles and got everything ready for a new log periodic that covered 10 through 20 meters. I have a lot of log periodic experience from my old contest days up at our Wyoming station, but now we're getting ready to put together a big one on top of our house. Hi, this is Anna, Whiskey Zero Alpha November Tango. I really enjoy contesting in DX. My dad and I decided to put up a log periodic to help me chase banned countries and to find an antenna we could put up for years with minimal service issue. The gain is very competitive compared to our old tribander. I really love it as I don't have to tune bands inside 10 to 20 meters. Wow, Anna, I don't think I could have said it better than myself. And it sure is nice to have the Ameritron RCS 8D remote coax switch that allows us to have a single feed line coming down from the roof and then on the eave underneath the tower we have all the short coax lines from each antenna that makes it easy to troubleshoot if we have a problem. The nice thing about the rotor plate on the Glen Martin tower it's just big enough to fit the 2800 rotor box inside the cage. We have it recessed about three feet down from the thrust bearing. This is a real tight setup, but a real sturdy one. As you can see, the log periodic comes in hundreds of pieces when you first take it out of the box. So counting it can take a night. And then usually by about, oh, I say about after a day and a half, you can get the antenna to the point of having both boom sections built. And then from there, it's pretty simple to add on the elements to complete the antenna. Then you make the call to your local tree truck company, and out they come to put that 50-foot antenna on the boom truck and lift it up to a very handy and experienced tower worker to attach that antenna to the 10 foot mast. Then we put on the 40 meter rotatable dipole and the 3 meter 6 element Yagi and we're ready to go. The feed line going up to the tower is pretty well dog protected. It's basically consisting again of the coax line to the RCAS control switch, the rotor control cable, and the power line for the RCA relay control. This is a view from just behind the house and where the antenna coax is feed into the shack. We have an ICE bandpass filter because with a log periodic it can pick up a lot of ambient noise. So to make sure we have the cleanest signal going out and being received we like to use this. Now here's a demonstration of how that box works. Stand by. Pretty neat demonstration. Now there's the Ameritron RCS 8V remote coax switch sitting on top of the rotor. All we do is turn a dial and we're on different antennas. It's a great system. We really enjoy our azimuth math too to make sure that we have our beam headings correct and we have it all set up for contesting so we can easily glance over to see what we're doing. With proper engineering our tower has been maximized for our size of lot to try to reach out the best we can on the VHF UHF bands and 10 through 40 meters using a rotatable dipole. We have a lot of verticals in the backyard for the low bands. If you have any questions about this tower, however, feel free to contact us at N-Zero Alpha Hotel at ARRL Net. We look forward to answering any questions you may have or for any input you may be willing to offer. Thanks and 73s from N-Zero Alpha Hotel and W-Zero Alpha November Tango. Enjoy your day and good DX.